I love setting an elegant and festive holiday tablescape. And so today on the Sleepy Keys Craft Corner, we're going to be uh, creating a Thanksgiving cornucopia as well as doing some um, easy homemade crafts that you can add to your uh, Thanksgiving holiday tablescape. So, a couple things that you will need um, for today's crafts, that is, um, a pair of scissors, Uh, dried beans, uh, any variety of dried beans, a block or the cone of floral foam, um, some sort of red, orange, yellow, brownish um, foam or cardstock, any adhesive or glue or Mod Podge that you might have around. A um, some sort of a brush or paint brush um, that you can use to apply the glue. You'll need a full-sized cornucopia. Any color scheme um, or set of dried flowers that you might have. The first thing that you're going to want to do um, is choose your block, <clears throat> cone, or, you know, circle of floral foam. I just have this block laying around, so I'm going to be using this, um, 2 inch by 2.9, uh, rectangle of floral foam, and I'll need to take it out of this plastic wrapper first. Just be prepared for that um, when using it for your cornucopia. And this one has sort of a larger uh, cellular um, sort of shape to it, um, but it should have um, everything sticking inside of it um, just as easily as you would with some of those more fine almost powdery style ones. Okay, you know, this is the cornucopia I, I have. This is what I'm working with. And I had a thought this year, oh, I thought, oh gosh, do I wanna, you know, do something a little bit different? Do I wanna think outside the cornucopia, right? And so, I just want to throw out some, you know, alternate ideas that you could, um, you know, use when doing your Thanksgiving tablescaping that, um, might be a little out of the ordinary, but might go over really well with your friends and family. So, one idea I had was to, um, put this small tape player inside of the cornucopia, and then I would record some, oh, just some fun voices and just, interesting dialogue, maybe some sounds of flatulence, and I was going to place that inside of the cornucopia, and um, right when dinner started, I would press play, right, and um, then everyone would say, what is that noise? Where is that coming from? Um, and I'd say, oh, I, I don't know. What are you talking about? And really, it would just be a, you know, a fun gag where, uh, you know, this has been hidden inside the cornucopia. Nobody sees it. Um, and then I would get a real laugh out of that, but that's not for every, uh, you know, formal family, uh, you know, sit down dinner. I think it would be funny though. And then I also considered, you know, why not, 
why not make use of, you know, some, some wigs that I've got lying around the house? And what if we dressed up the cornucopia a little bit? What if we, you know, added a beautiful wig and then, you know, we pair that with a sunglass. Oh gosh. And then you've got this fun, you've got this fun little, um, you know, cornucopia where you can decorate it just like that. Or you could add some, you know, some earrings to the side, maybe a, maybe a necklace. Oh, a fun mouth. Like um, if you've got one of those Mr. Potato Head sets laying around, you can add a mouth right here. And then you've got a really fun focal piece, centerpiece to your table that will surely have your uh, friends and family asking, oh, um, what is that on the table? And you say, well, that's that's just our, uh, our beautiful festive Thanksgiving centerpiece. It's, uh, you know, Ms. Cornucopia, right? beautiful. Um, and you say, oh, oh, and then that, well, you know, the horn of plenty gets a little chilly sometimes. Um, and so that's why I've knitted, or sorry, crocheted this little sock to put on the bottom. And you just slide that on like so. There you go. Now, I don't, uh, your, your friends and family are probably never going to say, I've, you know, I've never seen anything like that. But you say, well, you know, maybe, maybe I should host Thanksgiving more often because that's where you can see, you know, um, you know, a different kind of centerpiece that you don't see everywhere else at Thanksgiving. So, and you know, it's depending on what wig you have, you can style it how you like. I think the heart-shaped sunglasses really speak to, oh, you know, um, love, thanks, gratitude, and the, um, beautiful silver gray hair here really, um, you know, alludes to a, um, uh, you know, a wisdom of time in the ages, um, and hopefully learning from the past, right? So that's what this cornucopia would say, if that's what you wanted to do on your Thanksgiving table. But, um, I can understand if you want to do something a little bit more traditional it's a traditional holiday. Maybe you don't want to rock the boat. I do, um, but maybe you don't. So instead, you know, get this wig off and the little cozy. And we'll save these sunglasses for our convertible rides instead. So instead what we're going to do is, um, take the uh, floral foam that you've got and you're just going to want to put that inside the cone, the horn of plenty and just kind of jam it in there, right? So you've got something that's going to um, uh, hold on to your uh, flowers for you. See, just like that. And once you have that set up, um, grab your florals of choice. So, you know, dry flowers do make a mess. So maybe you want to do something that's a little, um, maybe a, a real flower or, um, you know, a, a, a fake floral that doesn't kind of fall apart like this. Anyway. I love these big fans, so I'm going to start with that, and hopefully, look, I just stick it in like that, and then it, and then it's able to just stick out of the, um, cone in such a way that it looks like it's just floating, right, right? Take one of these. Just a couple of these. 
And you know, some of these, they don't have to go inside the floral foam. You can stick them out of the top, you know, uh, of your um, basket, your cornucopia basket as well. Make sure you get some alternating uh, colors and patterns in there. That looks great, right? Um, so I think I think just sticking it out like that looks pretty good. Mm, there's a nice, nice little reed here. That could be nice. the space a little bit more with this. Then another read. Put that one over here. Great, now that looks beautiful. And, you know, it wouldn't look quite the same if you just shoved it all in there, you know, as it was. It needs that foam to kind of take up, the floral foam to take up a little bit more space and um, give it that depth, right? So this looks great. However, we've made a bit of a mess here. So um, let's see if we can't get a little bit of this cleaned up it's always best to clean up as you go, you know? <sighs> kind of like when you're cooking dinner or something, you don't want to just have a pile of dishes at the end. You want to put stuff away, rinse things off as you go. Otherwise, it's just a real mess. Um, so let's, let's do that here. I love the way these little little seed pods look though. That's the beauty of the the, the dried flowers is you know it obviously makes a bit of a mess, but you get these gorgeous textures and colors of uh, with the seeds. getting somewhere, but there's a lot more to pick up. There was a gray hair I thought, is that from me or is it from the wig? I don't know. I think, um, you know, having a cornucopia on your Thanksgiving tablescape um, you know, not only is it, you know, the epitome of Thanksgiving decorations, but it does also offer, um, you know, um, a little bit more of a good, a better sight line than, say, um, a bouquet of flowers, right? So a bouquet is sitting upright. And then <clears throat> what happens when you have a bouquet is that um, 
you know, if you've got someone sitting across from you, you can't see them. It's like, hello, is there anyone over there? But with the cornucopia, it's a little bit flatter, and so it gives you better sight lines um, across your table, which is, again, important for, you know, being able to come together, have conversations, um, and uh, really see everyone um, in, at, your, at your table. Uh, and then easier for passing potatoes and such. So. Okay. Well, I think I might have to get a lint roller. I'm beginning to think that these dry flowers weren't a great idea, but you know, we've come this far, so. It's those little seeds, it makes it hard to pick up. And then they, they just keep falling off. I should have just gone with the wig and the sunglasses, but that's what happens when I try and you know, stick with a traditional plan here. do it for now. So, um, next up, uh, the next most important thing I would say in a, uh, tablescape is who's sitting where. And if you don't, um, specify where folks are sitting, then you might have some mix-ups at your uh, dinner table. So it's ideal to do some um, nameplates for your um, your dinners, whether it's a Thanksgiving, a, you know, a big holiday dinner, or just like a luncheon. Um, having place cards and you know your attendees' names planned out, who's sitting next to who, um, can really go a long way in making for a smooth. Um, and successful uh, dinner. So, because it's Thanksgiving, well, of course, um, we're gonna want something with a turkey theme, right? And so, there's no more classic uh, Thanksgiving, oh, what do you call it, um, craft theme than the uh, hand turkey. This is where that uh, cardstock or poster board or whatever paper you've got lying around is going to come in handy. Um, and so in this case I've chosen this sort of thick foam piece because it's a little bit more malleable. It's easy to cut. Um, it's something that I had that is red, you know, so on the you know, Thanksgiving color palette. And um, yeah, and I just thought it would be a good, uh, good option to use. So, if you haven't done this before for some for some wild reason, you just put your hand on the paper, and then I need to find a pen. Uh, if you haven't done this before, you put your hand on the uh, the paper, and then you're just going to going to want to get a good trace. Let me take my bracelets off for this, and. Just like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just this is just gonna give you your basic turkey shape, right? 
um, once you have your basic turkey shape, you grab your shears, any cutting uh, scissors that you've got, and then you're going to want to cut that out. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. There's my turkey. How easy is that? Um, and you can see it's not exactly, not exactly my hand. You know, my nails are in there. You could cut it a little bit smaller if you're trying to seem like you've got a smaller hand. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> but once you have that, you are going to um, take your hand, and we really want to make this turkey. Oh. Um, I need a scrap sheet of paper. We really want to make this turkey um, folksy and a little bit more artsy. So this is where the glue and the beans come in. So um, what I'm going to do is get a protective sheet of paper under this. Alright. There we go. And folks, it's always so important to do um, your crafting on some sort of protective um, paper, cardboard, because you don't want to be, you know, gluing or getting, um, you know, paint and stains on your, um, you know, your kitchen table and such. So, I've got this here. And now, this is where those beans are going to come in handy. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can go about this. You could have it be something very ornate, where you have the whole hand covered in beans, except for, um, you know, some negative space that spells the person's names or initials. Or, you know, you use the beans um, to spell the name. So, you know, this is... This is for my friend uh, Beverly, that I could just do, you know, one, one set of beans to spell out her name, or just B-E-V, just Bev. Um, or you could just cover the whole bean, or sorry, you could just cover the whole hand in beans and then put another piece of paper on top of that or on the back of it it's got the name um or it's upright like this you know because it's a turkey um but let's let's make this look a little bit more turkey like by adding an eye and i think this this bean will do the trick I'd really prefer an eye that's bedazzled, though, if I'm being honest with you. But I'll, I'll see what I can find. Anyways. I think in this case, um, for, my for my tablescape, for my company, I am going to um, write the person's name on the bottom, and then I'm just going to stick beans all along the top. And I think that'll add a lot of um, elegance and nice color to the tablescape. So, I think I'll just use the same ink pen here. And again, this is going to be for Bev. So, 
So I've chosen to do a bubble letter because I think I think it's easy to read, but it's also, um, you know, kind of fun. Adds a little bit of whimsy. And I think I'm just going to draw an eye here. Oh, great. So, now we're going to get our glue, um, glue stick, whatever you've got, Mod, Mod Podge, in my case. And I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be too fussy about this. Oof. But I am going to just cover it's so stinky. I'm just gonna cover the fingers. And then grab my beans. And stick my beans to the to the fingers here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Looking good. Now, this is a craft where you could um, you know, get the kids involved, um, have it be like a family craft night before the holiday. Um, but you should know that it will turn out looking like crap. So just keep that in mind. But, you know, it's fun. It's not a big deal. It's a low, low stakes situation. Um, so that's up to you. But it's easy because we're just gluing. We're just gluing the beans to the uh, hand here, not hand, sorry, to our Thanksgiving turkey. looking good. Great, so make sure you've got a good amount on there. Come up right into the eye here, into the turkey's head. looking great. Yeah, something about the color of the beans is really adding a nice, um, oh, that's going to add a nice pop of color to the, to the Thanksgiving table. And honestly, now that I'm looking at the name Bev down here, I feel like it does need to be colored in a bit. So let me just do that real quick. And you could do this with a permanent marker. You could do this with some paints. You could, um, you know, cut this part out so it shows through to the plate or napkin for that person at your dinner table. Um, you know, an ideal situation, I'd say use glitter, but the thing about glitter at the Thanksgiving table is that, you know, it might, it might get loose from uh, the nameplate that you've made, and then you've got a guest where they've got glitter on their fingers after they've touched it, and then they're getting glitter all over 
the uh, serving utensils. Um, they're getting glitter on their clothing. They're getting glitter on you know, the chairs, the table runner. Um, and then that can become an issue where, um, you know, you just have glitter everywhere. Now, I like glitter, so I'm not that upset about it, but, um, you know, others, others may be upset. So we need just a little bit more glue and just a little bit more bean. So... And make sure when you're doing these crafts that you've got oh, a well-ventilated area. Um, that you're, you know, wearing a, a smock. Something you don't mind getting boogered up. Um, because that will happen. Close this. Somehow I've still gotten uh, ink pen all over my finger, but this, uh-oh, this is going to take some time to, uh, to dry, so we're going to set this aside um, and move on to how we want to set up our table. I thought it might be fun to um, bring out my Neil the Frog set where I'm going to be... Um, sort of leaning into a green, yellow, red, and, uh, you know, natural colors, uh, color scheme. Um, so in terms of the right napkin for the job, look at that. Um, we're just going to keep it simple with a fold where I'm going to take this edge out here put my knife and fork in the middle, wrap the bottom, bring that around to the side, bring this around to this side, and place that off to their left. And then, you know, I do have so many salt and pepper shakers that it would be okay to give everyone their own individual set. And then that opens up a whole other option for tablescaping where you could feasibly do a separate um, theme for each guest. So each individual seat could have its own, um, you know, its own color scheme, its own theme, frogs, red, uh, farm, uh, rooster, um, turquoise. So something to keep in mind. Not for this Thanksgiving, but maybe next year. So, that goes there. Put their cup up top and kneel the frog. And then, perhaps it needed more time to dry, but right underneath that I can put their beautiful uh, rooster um, uh, placeholder right on their plate, just like so. Look at that. Now, You've got the cornucopia, the table setting. Uh, all you need are the guests and the turkey. So that's it. That's a, such a beautiful way to add whimsy and beans to your tablescape for the holidays. So I hope you enjoy it. And just remember, think outside the cornucopia. Have a little fun with it. And if nothing else, Get a giant cornucopia like this. Um, and if you've got a giant cornucopia, well then you can use your Sony Watchmen to uh, watch the football game by hiding it behind the cornucopia and no one will ever know. So, thanks so much for joining us for this Sleepy Keys uh, craft corner and I hope you have a wonderful and uh, safe Thanksgiving holiday.